she's actually being okay right now. Yeah, she's at least documenting before she's going to destroy it. Hope she doesn't lose that camera. Yeah. <laughs> maybe that's yeah, going to be waterproof. Maybe that's yeah. going to be her out is, you know, she's she's not going to take things, but she has to or it'll be destroyed. Also, where did this guy come from? He didn't have to climb all those <laughs> yeah. crazy legends. Where was he when she was trapped? He was like, oh, I just took the stairs. <laughs> 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 Episode 6 of Archaeology Arcade. I'm your host, Mike, with the Florida Public Archaeology Network. And once again, I'm joined by my co-host, Tristan. And this time, we brought on a special, our featured guest, who's actually going to be playing this game, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, Andreas Garzon, from the Florida Atlantic University. Uh, how, how are you two doing today? I'm doing great, thank Good. you. And so, Andreas, you've uh, obviously you've played this game a little bit before, and uh, we wanted to bring you on uh, not only because you uh, have experience playing this game, but also because of, of some of the research and work that you've done uh, through your archaeological career so far. So, can you tell us a little bit about um, some of a little bit about you, I guess about your background, uh, and then uh, about some of your research? Oh yeah, of course. Thanks for bringing me in. Um... First of all, I, I love gaming. I gamed all my life, and I think it uh, with archaeology, there's this great um, kind of connection because we're always trying to replicate the past, and what better way to do it than to reproduce it digitally somehow, you know? So there's there's a lot of uh, intersections between video games and uh, and archaeology. Then uh, my research is uh, in I'm from Ecuador, and I work in the coast of Ecuador. Um, in a town called Salango, uh, through the Florida um, Atlantic University Archaeological Field School in Ecuador. So we take students every summer, we teach them how to do archaeology, how to do cultural anthropology, and we dig uh, in the cloud forest there. So there's this coastal mountains where they, they get all this uh, cloud moisture up in, in the high elevations, and it's very tropical forest, very humid forest and there uh, they are the remains of um, hundreds if not thousands of stone foundations that used to be the houses and temples and storage warehouses and all kinds of different architecture from this culture called the Manteño and the, the Manteño are basically uh, the ancestors of the local people there um, and they're the last group before uh, the Spanish uh, came over so it's interesting because this game actually takes place in the Americas and it uh, it has this idea of uh, what if um, groups would had become isolated in a way that they could have avoided being wiped out by the Spanish so it's an interesting uh, kind of alternative universe <laughs> yeah that's 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 incredible so I can't wait to talk to you more about this as we kind of play through this game and then also you you know you meant you just mentioned um, the Spanish and so I think uh, it's it's most appropriate that we, of course, recognize that today is uh, uh, Indigenous Peoples Day, uh, which which some people still call Columbus Day. Uh, but then it's also kind of towards the end of Hispanic Heritage Month in uh, in the United <laughs> States. And so, so I think this is like a maybe a perfect uh, perfect game and and perfect guest to have on. Uh, with that said, so so you you said you're from Ecuador. Um, mm -hmm. I guess. One question is, you know, of course, there's there still is some somewhat of controversy over over this idea of Columbus Day. And I, I know a lot of states have kind of transitioned to uh, what we now recognize as, as Indigenous Peoples Day. What's what's kind of the I guess the broad sentiment for Columbus in South America and maybe even more specifically for for Ecuador? Is, is there that same sort of um, uh same sort of view of Columbus as a person that's kind of, you know, been changing over the last uh, several decades through through more modern historical and archaeological research, or uh, is it maybe not so much of a big deal as it is here? Uh, you know, it's it's uh, very much uh, how we, how you said it. You know, there there has been a kind of a reckoning with our colonial past in the last few decades. Um, in my own experience growing up, growing up down there in, in the 80s and early 90s, um, 
we celebrated Columbus Day. You know, it was all, oh, you know, you learned about the ships, you, um, you know, th there was this glossing over the, the amount of people that died or like the, the, the break the, of, the, of, of this sort of continuous cultural traditions that of the last 10,000, 12,000 years. So all of that was glossed over and, you know, the idea was like, oh, well, the Spanish came with the ships and all of a sudden here we are, right? Um, and it wasn't until, you know, you, you got older and you, you researched a little bit more about the archaeology and the local cultures, which schools kind of glossed over back then. I think now um, there's a lot more conscious about it, so it's being taught in schools. This idea that, you know, there, there's a, a, it's not as pretty as we made it sound, right? Like it was, it was a, a very traumatic time for a lot of people. A lot of civilizations ended, a lot of people died. Um, and in a way, I think that there's a lot of parallels in kind of how the United States is having a reckoning with its own past with, uh, you know, the Confederate monuments and all that stuff, right? Because mm. even, you know, we have a statue of Columbus um, and of the, you know, Princess Sabella and all that in, in Quito and in the capital. And during this protest last year uh, in 2019 uh, against uh, these government measures, you know, one of the, the ways people react is, is by throwing blood on, on the statue of Columbus, right? Um, and that's something you see now, probably today, you'll see somebody will throw red paint and, and the hands of Columbus and the hands of the queen, uh, just to show, you know, that that's, that's our past. You, you, can't, you can't shy away from it, right? You can be proud of your past, but you also can't sugarcoat it <laughs> right yeah well yeah no it's, i think it's a great perspective to bring in so um tristan do you have anything to add or should we we go ahead and dive into this game and learn more about just one bit of um of uh for us for our viewers i want you to all be aware that this game is rated mature so it is graphic there is swearing so if that bothers you if you have young ones you may not want them to watch this particular video we do have plenty of other ones available on uh, on our YouTube channel, and we will have others that are appropriate for all audiences in the future. So do do keep in tune for that. So that's your disclaimer. So you, mm -hmm. you can't you can't sue us or whatever people do. All right, let's let's go ahead. Let's dive into this uh, Tomb Raider. Uh, Laura Le is so. This is after I guess this game came after the one we played last. Is that right, Tristan? A the, couple. You know, couple games after actually okay. okay all right cool let's let's dive in to this one all right i think so okay so first i want to load up a completed file just to give you an idea of this ancient city that's supposed to be uh protected from spanish influence and colonialism and kind of remained intact for the last couple hundred years um because if we start the game i'm not sure how long it'll take to get to that point so gotcha. just to show you that and the idea is really interesting right is that essentially uh some of the biggest civilizations in the americas escaped to the amazon and formed a independent uncontacted city so you have this mishmash of like aztec stuff and maya stuff and inca stuff you know the most oh, popular oh. my god i'm very lost i can't remember exactly <laughs> What was going on in this game? Lara Croft never is go. lost. She's hmm. never All lost. All right. So here's the map. So okay, so this see. is the this is the hidden city. That's the oh cool cenotes. That's right. Sweet. Awesome. So this is the city, right? Okay. So it's pretty big, and you have uh, you know all your your shops and houses and all that. So we'll try to go to the market. And which... so so it's like you said. These are this is a city that was uh that's still occupied by the same people who founded it in this particular game exactly gotcha. okay interesting okay how do i put a marker and so how does um some of this this scenery compare with some of the work you've you've done uh in, <laughs> in south america is it way off base or is like you... like you said it's kind of a mixed match of climates and ecologies and regions you know, these guys are really good um, about replicating environments. I would say probably more than culture. Um, 
So I think the vegetation is great. Um, in fact, I think one of the things about this game that made it, you know, um, kind of one of those advances in graphics at the time was the vegetation. Like they, they did a really good job just with the ground vegetation and the way it moves when you walk by it and all that stuff. So the last one we played, the reboot, I guess her hair was the big thing. That's so right, this, yeah. This is the vegetation. So now the, the hair and the vegetation's uh, pretty good. I wonder what else. Exactly. It, and we, we know from the last one, too, that uh, that she's really tough because she took an arrow to the gut and just pulled it out, and this was totally fine. There we go. We made it to the city. Oh, How's wow. it going, man? Wow. So can just you, can out. you interact with these people? Uh, yeah, these graphics are pretty pretty good. Uh, I'm trying to. I'm um, going through the re the control, <laughs> remembering like, oh, how how do you do this? Oh, well, maybe not. <laughs> he doesn't all think right, you're we'll weird at all. <laughs> you know so one of the things that I find neat about this game is that um, if you see a lot of representations of the past, people forget children, mm. especially in games. So this is nice that you see families and people of different ages and genders. I know games often do that intentionally to just dodge issues of can the children die mm. that was pretty gloomy yeah well <laughs> 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 but that's why it's often the case your kids are, if your virtual kids are all occupied right now in their schoolwork but uh so this is cool that they're here. doing it here yeah wow oh, or is it a capybara oh that's a capybara look oh, at that cool. nice i was so gonna say because like there's no pigs can you can you tell us what what a capybara is Okay, so a capybara is like a giant guinea pig. Uh, they're the largest rodents alive. They live in the Amazon, and they make apparently great pets because oh. they are very loving. Ooh, there's a llama. What was that channel? But they on the are floor? very tasty. They're oh, so you've had them before? No, I've actually okay. haven't had the uh, capybara, but I've had their uh, smaller coastal co cousin called a guanta. Okay. So those are about like a third of the size. They live in the cloud forest and they are delicious. Do they? T I mean, do they? Do they taste like completely distinctive from any other meat, or is there anything it kind of compares? To? So the best way to describe, I would say, it's 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 almost like duck in that it's like oh. greasy and kind of like a dark meat, but with the texture more of a uh, chicken, I guess. Hmm. It's very good. <laughs> yeah, I totally want some. Yeah. So this is also neat. You see um, the water canals like the Inca used to do. Yeah, um, I noticed it so going through. So that's how they would distribute water across their cities. They would have this uh, open air canals. It was going, going through the kitchen or something too, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I wonder how pollution, if that was ever an issue with that kind of system sometimes. Well, as long as it goes down river, right? I suppose, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, How does the architecture compare with some of the sites that you've worked on here? Oops, sorry, lady. Um, so rude. So this is neat. The architecture, I think a lot of it is uh, Inca inspired, like especially these walls, right? Like those mm. are definitely Inca because they did the very big blocks that are very uniform in that they fit very well, but because they are like Legos in a way, they are kind of different shapes. So that is very Inca. Um, this would be probably more my, uh, again, it's like a very mixed mishmash uh, of the three cultures. But something that's really neat is that uh, they used uh, anthropologists and archeologists and linguists to develop this game. So the languages you're hearing are Quechua, which is the language of the Incas, or Nahuatl, which is the language of the Aztecs, or, you know, Yucatec, or Mayapan, one of the Maya languages, too. Wow, that's incredible. So the guy that's going machata, 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 that's definitely Quechua. <laughs> cool. Let's so, see if so I can you... recognize the people. So, okay, so the people that are wearing, uh, you know, the long skirts and... So she's Inca, definitely, like Quechua. Okay. And you can tell that from the, the language? The clothing. Or how, the clothing, okay. Yeah, it's the, the textiles and uh, the, the step 
you know, uh, iconography and all that is very Inca. Well, this guy or this girl most likely is Maya or Aztec. Not sure. Hmm. That's amazing that they put this much research into this game. I mean, I, I think a lot of times uh, details like that. Yeah, he's pretty. He's definitely important. Yeah. Oh, so if I remember correctly, yeah, someone takes over the city that's not great, and you have to kind of fight them, and this is one of their guys. But this is a actually a really cool mishmash of cultures, right? So do you see the guy's mask? So the guy, the guy's mask looks very much uh, like northern Peruvian cultures, like Lord of Sipan, um, like Chimu uh, cultures. They were incredible at making stuff out of gold. Now the jaw of this guy's mask is actually made out of jade, and that is very Aztec, Maya, you know, Mesoamerican. So here you have this, you know, interesting hypothetical mishmash of these two empires and regions that never really had a clashing moment. Moment. Maybe they had long distance trade and stuff like that, but they never really had to deal with each other. So in this hypothetical scenario, you you know they did have to. What about the pillar behind the guy? Was there any recognizable pillar. iconography in yeah, there? Yeah, that stuff looks very uh, Aztec, either Aztec or Maya. Okay. I'm not a Mesoamericanist, so I apologize. You can't know everything. It's That's clearly fine. one or the <laughs> other. Probably Maya. <laughs> You definitely know more than Tristan and I. Definitely. For sure. <laughs> I did do my field school in Belize. That was oh, really cool. Fun. Oh, how was that? Oh, it was crazy. It was really cool. All right. So this guy is actually from Bolivia. This Have you guys heard about the site um, Tiwanaku? Yeah. Yeah, actually. Um, yes. Recently. I, I learned a little bit about the site, but can you tell us about it? That's a very famous site in Bolivia, and it was very important to the Inca as a sacred site later on. Um, but that's where they, they started kind of moving towards monotheism, um, and this was essentially their god, it was Viracocha, um, which embodied the sun and uh, all kinds of other things. But So it's neat to see that uh, they have this uh, Viracocha right here. That's so cool. Yeah, I, I actually, I know uh, recently, They've been doing some underwater archaeology in Lake Titicaca, like looking for some of the, um, uh, you know, evidence of the, the people who built those uh, those large monolithic structures. Mm. And uh, I think recently too, they have a there's a website. I'll I'll see if I can find it. Maybe throw it up on the YouTube uh, channel whenever we get this up on there. But they they did find like a stone mason's toolkit at at one of the underwater sites recently, which was pretty cool i don't know if that's like a you know a regular thing to find but it, it looked pretty neat oh, that's really cool yeah no um I'm definitely not not a regular thing to find that's pretty incredible <laughs> yeah so this is really neat uh let's talk about pottery you know because archaeology oh yeah yeah you guys see that pot right there oh uh, yeah uh, Next the to one the mummy? You... yes yeah <laughs> oh is that what that is it's a mummy yes oh, so huh. two fun inca facts here one is the pot. Um, that's called an arevalo or arivalo. It can be pronounced either way. And this is basically the quintessential, like, Inca-style imperial pot. Like, everyone had one of these all throughout the empire. They were mass-produced. This is basically your, your most common topperware. Um, and this is where you would have your, your chicha, which is beer maize. Um, and they're pointy at the bottom, so you can just kind of wiggle it in the ground and they will stay perfectly oh, wow. uh, oh, cool. upright. It's like it the sort of looks like it, Yeah, I was going to say the amphora, right? What? I mean, it looks very yep, it's it's basically an Inca amphora, yep. It's kind of like the opposite of the pontil we see in wine bottles then because they push that up for the same reason just to go on a flat surface. Exactly. That's cool though. And then you would sling a cord around the ears there and around that uh, little um, head which is supposed to be a jaguar um and that's where you kind of tie it together and then oh, you can wow. sling it in your back kind of like a backpack that's smart so did, did these change stylistically over time or are, are they pretty much uniform you know if you um, find so the incas really weren't around for that long um especially as a you, you know large consolidated empire so you do see them early on but 
what you do see is that as they expand and then conquer someone, you see those people then having that in their assemblage, right? So um, the Inca conquest of Ecuador was very late in their chronology. And you see, you know, the local wares, the local wares, and all of a sudden, oh, you have like a, a piece of an Arevalo. And it's like, okay, there is definitely Inca influence going on hmm. here. And then based on how much you start seeing versus other local wares, you see, okay, the Incas were not only like just visiting, they actually consolidated this area to their empire, or they were just like uh, economically consolidating the area and the empire, because there were different stages of, of conquest, depending on who they were conquering to. So this is really neat. Um, the other thing you can see here is uh, you see the guy that's, I don't know, praying or doing mm -hmm. some sort of ritual, but that's another thing the Incas did is uh, they used to hang out with their mummies, with their dead. Um, if they were very important people, they would uh, mummify them and then have them sitting around doing the rituals. And then, you know, there's an important parade or ceremony that will be taken out and moved around town. So imagine having uh, your great grandparents hang out in your living room. Wow. So it wasn't yeah, in, in the living spaces then. It wasn't just in like a, a ritual spot. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. No. You do. I mean, okay. depends who you are, right? They didn't do sure. it for everybody. Sure, sure. Yeah. If they like you, you're you an uncle that everybody hated. You probably wouldn't yeah. get that treatment. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, not not uncle, not the uncle. Yeah. This is amazing. This game. Like, I'm really impressed. Yeah. With they definitely. did a lot of work. Um, you know, really uh, investigating these cultures. You know, they 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 pick the most you know famous civilizations with like the most famous artifacts to replicate but even the work with the language is really impressive you know it's almost so a this shame. guy is an aztec eagle warrior so you don't mess with this guy yeah <laughs> he looks pretty tough but <laughs> he's never shot lara croft with an arrow she could That's probably take true. maybe not from him though you know and so that, that guess what's one thing to talk about the the weaponry um do, do you find uh like weaponry at all when you're doing archaeology down in, in Ecuador? And what does that look like compared to anything you see here? That is a fascinating question. So this is one of my favorite things about the group that I study is that we have no weaponry. We have no shields. We have no armor. We have nothing like that. Um, the Manteño, I, I like to compare them with kind of like the Phoenicians in that they were uh, incredible sailors and traders. They would go all the way to West, Western Mexico and to the south of Chile to trade and, and procure goods. So their control over a region was very much uh, commercial, hmm. right? Um, and the Incas kind of, I mean, they made it to the coast of Ecuador, but they never really submitted the Manteños. And, we don't know if it's a lack of time because the Spanish were already kind of getting there um, or it was just it's just not the right environment because the Incas did really poorly uh, in the jungle and in very thick forests. So they never really did well in, in the Amazon. They never really did well in the coast of Ecuador just because it's a very different environment. You, you just can't bring those armies of like 100,000 people like side by side across like a sure. tropical forest. You just yeah. can't. So. Yeah, imagine um, it's hard to feed an army that size, moving that yeah. far. So there is supposed to be a part of the Inca Trail that goes into the Manteño land, and we know that Huayna Capac made it to uh, this island that's just off the coast of Manteño. So we know they had contact, but there was no real conquest. Ooh, look at that corn. Wow, yeah, that's tasty. Take some of that. That is called the Chirimoya. If you ever had a chance of trying it, it's really tasty. What is it? Is it a fruit? Yep, it's a fruit. It's like, I don't know how, how to describe it. If you break it, it's almost like a very sweet pineapple inside. Oh, man, I mm. love pineapple. What about the fruits behind it? Is that like limes? I have no idea. what. They, you wouldn't have limes because limes come from Southeast Asia. Right. Um, Could be an unprocessed nut. Like, um, oh, my God, what are these things called? Um... I don't know. I don't know what they are. We can just say that the developers messed up because they put lemons. <laughs> you so put lemons and limes in go here. Go back they to that fire lemons. real quick, if you would. Get your facts straight. Is Ooh, that another fire. one of the pots you were telling us about that had the pointy bottoms? Yep, that's the Arevalo. Yep. So in this case, they would have had to have it hollowed out underneath it for that purpose? Or is this maybe another mistake? 
Um, in the design. Well, I think it's within this like soft. Oh, uh, soft? I guess that's oh, a rock. Yeah, so tell. that is yeah. that is a mistake on the okay. developers because that would not work. <laughs> that would. I thought maybe they had a special spot for it. But oh yeah, they just doesn't. put it like across yeah. that rock. <laughs> yeah, I see that clipping. <laughs> well done, Tristan. You pointed the one. Oh mistake. man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I had something Girl. interesting there. <laughs> This this spot is really neat. Uh, these are very Ecuadorian, actually. Uh, mm. So I'm I'm pretty excited that it's here. This is called a uh, whistle uh, double spouted pot. So what oh, you do cool. is that you put water on the the opening right there on the right side, and then you tilt the whole thing and you pass the water from one side to the other, making air go through the beak, which is actually a whistle. So it actually makes a noise oh, when wow. you. Was there very, a reason, very neat. reason for doing that, or I mean, other than just it makes a cool sound? Was there any it, other? It, it's supposed to make the sound of the animal that is representing and all that oh, good stuff. Cool. Okay. Yeah. But you see them in northern Peruvian cultures. You see them in, in very early Ecuadorian cultures as well. So it's neat to see that stuff here as well. Now, yeah, when this you say is you... definitely northern Peruvian here. Oh wow! But when you say when you when you see this sort of stuff. Are you speaking like archaeologically, and does it? Is were we talking full pots, or you're just finding broken bits and pieces of it? Uh, well, you know, archaeologists mostly find broken bits and pieces. Uh, the looters are the ones that get all the good stuff because mm -hmm. they don't follow the rules. Right. Um, <laughs> but you of... know, if we get really lucky and we we have a, a undisturbed site that hasn't been affected by people that are just stealing, then. Yes, we do get lucky and we wow. do get full pots, uh, mostly in burials, because okay. if you think about it, what are you finding is is essentially what was left behind. So all the broken mm -hmm. stuff is going to be stuff that was already broken, right? People's trash, you know, middens and, and trash pits and all that good stuff, right? But where are you going to find the stuff that's still complete? It's going to be the stuff that you buried complete, right? Mm -hmm. So it's going to mm -hmm. be stuff that was buried on purpose, either because it was a storage pit uh, and you're like storing some sort of good inside a pot and then you forgot about it or like uh, or something happened or it's a burial and, and you're putting offerings inside these pots. So we do get some full pots, but usually they're they're within those um, burials. Wow. And so you mentioned uh, looters and I think it's good to talk about that because the game's called Tomb Raider and she does a lot of like questionable things. So I, so you're saying that, that that's a big problem uh, in Ecuador as well. It's like that you worked out as looting. So it, it is a big problem in the country in general. Um, and that's why it is so important to work with local communities because they are really the, you know, the, the, the people that this history belongs to and this land belongs to and they will protect it. So I am really lucky to work in a community called Rio Blanco uh, where people do um, ecotourism. So they take people oh, wow. into the cloud forest to see the animals and all that. Uh, and we're trying to incorporate the archaeology into it as well. But oh. what uh, has happened there is that they've always been extremely protective of their land, extremely protective to the point that, you know, only in the last generation, they've really opened up to the public and to tourism. Oh, look at that frog. <laughs> is it a tree um, frog? Yeah, it's like, lick it. No. <laughs> <laughs> I was in, uh, several years ago, I was in Costa Rica, and we went on this, uh, there's a Picari River that you can take, like a whitewater rafting tour down. And we had this guide, and he, uh, we, we went like halfway through the, like the, to the halfway point or whatever these rapids and he he pulled the boat on the shore and he just like jumped out into the woods and like disappeared and we were you know a bunch of white people didn't know like we you know we, we didn't know where the hell we were at and it, he's a couple minutes later he comes back and he has his hands cupped and then he he opens up one hand and it was a little tree frog and he he sh i guess i guess if you sh he, he was shaking it so i guess that keeps it from like jumping away so you can see it but, I, but as best I could tell from the, the very little Spanish that I can understand is, is I guess it, it was the same kind of a tree frog that they used to make like poison darts. Oh, it. yeah. Yeah. Super and then he dangerous. let it, then, yeah, then he let it go and jump back in and he pushed us off, you know, it's pretty cool. <laughs> anyway, it's tree frog. That's so, great. But, but you're saying, so in, in Rio Blanco, like how many, when you say recent, more recently, like how many years has it been more open to like ecotourism, like you've explained. So um, my professor, Valentina Martinez, has been working down in Ecuador for over 22 years. And it's been basically in the last about 12 years that she's entered that area. 
Um, Oh, wow. And, you know, the community is being incredibly receptive. And uh, what I, I was getting to is that one of the reasons we're able to work there is because they've been so protective about their land that they've kicked all the looters out. They've, oh, they, wow. We have very, very, very little, if not no looting whatsoever in that area, which is, makes it very, very special. And that just shows that the local communities, if they have control over their land, they'll protect it. <laughs> yes. Uh, but other parts of Ecuador, yeah, it's very problematic, you know, stuff gets, uh... Guess I need the Serpent Guard outfit, huh? So, are there a lot of, um, like, strong uh, national laws that protect archaeological sites in Ecuador? Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, and they've gotten better in the last 20 years. There was a very large effort to in make a national inventory of collections you know because a lot of stuff is in people's private collections mm. so that was an incredible success um there's uh there were very well funded organisms that you know keep permits and protect uh sites and all that good stuff but you know with covid and and all um it's becoming more difficult to fund those public uh, enterprises that protect uh, archaeology. Mm. But there, there are very good labs and very good uh, national parks that have incredible archaeological sites that are very much worth checking out. Yeah, I've always wanted to go to Ecuador. It's like on my list of places to go before I, you know, before I turned 25 that I never went to and haven't been to yet, even though I'm pushing 40 now. <laughs> But I'd, I'd love to one day. Oh, you to, should. It's wonderful. Yeah. And my, uh, since you guys are big archaeology nerds like me, <laughs> I'll tell you why Ecuador is really, really cool. We have the oldest, if not one of the oldest, if not the oldest pottery in the Americas. Oh, wow. It's uh, about, what's well, like 4600 BC. Wow. Yeah, that's amazing. Um, and we do have uh, the oldest known use of platinum in the world oh, oh really nice. uh, about 2000 years old yes wow so so did they did they how did they work it did they like melt it down and did they have um so this is a culture in the coast northern coast of ecuador called tolita and what they did is there was a lot of uh, cold hammering riveting um but they even did uh mixtures of uh silver and gold platinum and gold um uh, uh, you know, to make the the wiring that then you hammer and all that stuff. So they don't particularly do like true smelting with casting. It's okay. a lot of like cold hammering techniques and rivets. Um, but they did do basically what the uh, what do you call when you mix two metals? I can't remember now. Uh, alloy. Al alloy. An alloy. Yeah. So they yeah. made like metal alloys with with wow. copper, bronze. You know, like uh, gold, silver, platinum. They're incredible. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. That's a lot okay, of work. Okay, so we're in the market. Check this out. All right. <laughs> Lots of <the> pottery. <laughs> what this guy's selling. Is he selling a serpent costume? Like, hey, ask him if he has a serpent costume. I think I have a serpent costume. Oh, you have it? <laughs> yeah. How did, how did you get it? You just Did you have to find it, or did you, can you buy it? Uh, honestly, I can't remember. It was part of the progression of the game. Gotcha. I'm trying to remember Those are how fishing to go spears to that in the back, menu. I think. Oh, there we go. Okay, so let's see. So I see I got ninety three percent complete. Nice. Why did I stop? <laughs> Probably because the last seven percent are real pains in the butt. Oh yeah, it was just like the li littlest things, and I was yeah. just like, uh, I'm okay. Yeah, yeah, yep. Okay. Well, so you see, you have uh, the Ketra, which is the Inca. Uh, the Yucatec, which is the Maya, um, and then the Mom, which I guess is the Aztec. I don't know why it's not a, uh, not what, but I guess they know better than I do. <laughs> so what what kind of distance are we talking from uh, from these different groups that they would have had to travel this far? I mean, were we talking hundreds of miles or thousands? I guess it would be far. I guess the closest people would have been the Incas because they were at the doorstep of the Amazon. This is supposed to be in the middle of the Amazon. For the Aztecs and the Maya, they would have to go all through Central America and then Colombia and then into the jungle. So that would be pretty far. Yeah. I, wouldn't, I can't come up with a number at the top of my head, but thousands of miles. Wow. It's a neat idea. I mean, you know, the problem is that 
you know, talking about it today, what happened in the Americas was basically the biggest dying we've seen in the world. Like, mm -hmm. I'm, you know, modern estimates are giving numbers of nine out of 10 people in most coastal places and eight to seven, 10 out of people in inland places being wiped out by disease. So, right. Wow. I mean, yeah. imagine yeah. how, I mean, how our, our, our own societies are suffering today with with the numbers of COVID and, you know, it's, it's a real tragedy, but imagine if this was killing nine out of 10 people, it's, right, yeah. it's a complete collapse of, of everything you yes. believe in. And, right. and, you know, you know, this is interesting too, is because if you look at like the, the collapse of the Mississippian chiefdoms in the Southeastern United States, and this idea that, like you said, you know, nine out of 10 people are dying. So these, you know, these different groups are having to kind of coalesce and come together mm -hmm. kind of like this. And then, you know, out of that comes these, you know, these kind of modern ideas of, of tribes that we know of today, like, like the Creek, for example. Oh yeah. Or the, the Cherokee kind of are, are a confederation right. of a bunch of different groups that banded together. Yeah. So this is not that out oh, of, you know, out so of the realm. That? Yeah, that's cool. What kind of, is that a reed boat? Okay, so this is really cool. This is called a Totora. And yes, it is a reed boat. Um, wow. This is very Peruvian and Bolivian. So these are the type of boats you would say in Lake Ticticaca or you would see in the coast of northern Peru. Wow. Um, in Ecuador, we have balsa wood. So um, you would see balsa rafts instead. Wow. So do they make these like traditional craft to, to this very day, like in the same style? Oh or? yeah, definitely. If you wow. go to a, there's a city oh, in Northern Peru called Huanchaco, um, and it's a great surfing spot. Um, they're kind of known as like, oh, we're the first surfers because they built this very short ones. It's very, it's actually this one you're seeing right there. Uh, and this is a fishing boat for the sea. So you actually can take it over the waves and you kind of wow. kneel on the middle of it. And then you throw your net out. So they're they're claimed to be the oldest surfers in the world. Oh, that's awesome! <laughs> so did what? Well, I'm assuming they were they had paddles to propel these. Yes, yeah, you have paddles. Now the Manteño, though the group that I studied, like I said, they they had balsa wood up in the cloud forest, and balsa wood is incredibly buoyant. So they made this gigantic raft. Hmm. Um, the one that was spotted by the Spanish was said to be, I think, like about 45 feet long. Oh, wow. um, and carried about 40 people. Damn, it's like a, it's like a sloop or skin. And, and they were, they were powered by sails. They, uh, they oh, had, wow. Yeah, wow. they had sails and I mean, these were like seaworthy, um, boats, you know, they were able to go to like Mexico. They were able to go to Chile. They had constant contact with the Peruvian cultures. They traded wow. this red shell called Spondylus. Um, that's, you know, it's, it's funny what we consider, uh, valuable, right? Because it's it has to have a few characteristics. It has to be rare and difficult to find. It has to be shiny and pretty, right? Mm -hmm. So these shells, you actually have to dive about 12 meters to get them. Um, so they're very difficult to get. Mm -hmm. What's that? Look at them. Just stole his spices. He can't cook his guinea pigs now. <laughs> yeah, are those guinea? Is that what that is? Guinea pig? That is guinea pig. Nice. Um. So Sorry, I lost my sailing? train of thought there. <laughs> well, you, you were talking about the, the shells that you would have to have. Oh, yeah. So, you know, they're rare to find. They're really pretty. They're bright red or bright uh, purple, and they can be made into beads. And then so you make necklaces and all that. Oh. So oh, were they sailing all the, like around the tip of South America, like all the way around? No, the furthest uh, south they would go is like northern Chile and southern Peru. So uh, it's all in the western coast of South America along the Pacific. Look at those symbols on the wall. Yeah. Hey, look, she's teaching the kids. Oh, yeah. Nice. So that iconography you see in the wall, um, it's very... Um, Panandinian in a way, you know, like you see it in Inca stuff, but it, it really, you see it early on in Ecuador as well. Um, so there's, um, you know, this kind of grander styles that are not specific to a, a particular culture, right? Um, that become very, very popular and they get shared among groups of people and 
So I see a lot of characteristics of, you know, 2000 year old Ecuadorian cultures in that iconography there, but also, you know, there's llamas and, and monkeys and things like that. <laughs> What's the language? Do you know? Uh, I wasn't paying attention. Hold on. Let me see. No, she stopped. Yeah, she stopped. I think it's K Ketra. Okay. People go like Ketra people. <laughs> and you guys Can see you the temples up there? Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, that's very Aztec. Even in the mountains like that? Oh, uh, not really. The Aztecs weren't really... Uh, not like that. But the idea is that this is very protected in a canyon, so mm. that's why it looks like that. So it's it's cool to see that mishmash because uh, then you know I'm surrounded by Inca houses. These are all right. Inca houses. Mm. Very cool. Cool. So it's, right, it's almost a shame that most people who play this wouldn't pick up on all these details. Right, I was gonna, I was gonna say the <laughs> same thing. Because holy like cow, there's a lot here. No it's a yeah, lot of detail, lot. right? Yeah. This is very impressive. Ooh, I remember. I think there was a fun place over here. Let's see if I can get it. Someone put thought into this and then they listened. Oop, nope. They didn't well, have I've that really disclaimer. forgotten how to play this game. <laughs> they didn't have it's it's almost like I'm watching Tristan do the gameplay here. <laughs> he hasn't died yet. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Well you should I start the game so we get like a little more action? Yeah, let's do it. Let's right. I mean this is I mean I could talk about this stuff all day. I yeah. It's really interesting. <laughs> So I would say I was, I'm really into video games and I liked kind of this intersection between video games and archaeology. One of the things I'm doing is, um, so I've been doing survey down there and, and mapping all these old foundations of this culture. And I have this big database and I was able to uh, basically recreate it in Minecraft to uh, oh, wow, kind of that's like awesome. recreate the buildings and see how it looked because we have this uh, small grant to make it time kind of into a small video game for uh, people and in, in, in kids in Ecuador to learn about their culture and see themselves represented and all that good stuff. Well, I want to help. Yeah. Hey, Let's stream that. You, I'm not the greatest at Minecraft, so if you either. have any experience, please. Here, we'll start a new game. So is, is uh, what you're doing with Minecraft, is that stuff public yet or... Um, no, I mean, I've, it's a work in progress, so okay. I haven't really like shared it with anyone, but I'll, I'll share it with you if you want to check yeah, it out. Yeah, I was going to say, I mean, I think it would be awesome because we had actually talked about one point about maybe doing Minecraft and, and how that would work. That would be the, neat. Uh, we can neat. actually do kind of like an open server where like multiple people can join. It would yeah. be kind of fun. Yeah. So this game was in, developed in conjunction with a historian and cultural consultants. This variety and partnering were both instrumental in crafting the world you're about to experience. Wow, I didn't get the rest of it, but that, that's awesome. Well, I, wonder... I was not consulted. <laughs> I was going to say, <laughs> you know, like if we don't, it, it sounds like you're like a really good uh, advocate for this game. So maybe next time they'll, they'll think about hiring you to do some of this consulting. If they work. consulted you, to, that pot to, wouldn't to have been in the with stone. The right <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, a heartbeat is never a good thing. No. And again. You guys remember how the last game ended? Because I did not. I didn't either. No. I, I think the last. I mean, the only time I played that game was the last time we did a, an episode uh, with that Tomb Raider reboot. And I think, Tristan, you were eaten by wolves or something. Oh, uh, that time I was shot by arrows. Oh, arrows. But wolves. Okay. And then Rock also crushed me. So. Oh, man. I... Uh, I'm really bad at QTEs. So there we go. Sorry, I couldn't hear you guys there for a second. Well, we know she eventually makes it on a helicopter, I guess, or maybe airplane, whatever this is. Probably nope. airplane. Why wouldn't you have parachutes? <laughs> right? <laughs> and she knew. Yeah. <laughs> it's because the, yeah. the company she's working for were trying to cut corners, so they couldn't afford the parachutes, maybe. So one of the biggest developments in this game that I remember, it's actually how she changes through the game depending on situations. So, you know, if she gets like shot, you'll see like blood on her or she falls on the mud, you'll see mud on her. So oh, cool. it's been pretty cool of how like, and yeah, if you like get in the water, then, you know, she gets cleaned up. So 
they they really did a lot of advances on like how the character is affected by the environment. In this oh, game. that's awesome. Yeah, one of my pet peeves of some of these movies is when a you know person gets wet and then in the next shot they're like pretty much dry. I'm like, yeah. come on, <laughs> <laughs> like how are you gonna dry? I remember there was that survival show with that British guy. Um, I can't remember his name. It's like. Less something. Less yeah, less. but but they would always have you know it was like oh, they try to make it look like he's really out there by himself, but then in one shot he ju- you know he like jumped eighty feet into a off a cliff into into this river for some reason, and then the next shot he'd get out, and then the next shot he'd be like pretty much dry. It's like come on, <laughs> <laughs> like, this is this is not real. So for people at home, me? but it's called reality TV. It must yeah, be I know it's got to be real. Yeah. And also in a survival situation, like why would you jump off an eighty foot cliff? Like if you break your leg, you're pretty much that's it. You're gonna die. Makes good TV. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> for people at home, we can't hear the voices either, uh, but we've got subtitles, so we're we're okay. And the this way, are pretty good. Uh-oh, she's not trying to talk good. over us. So well, I got I got it super overclocked to, just for you guys. <laughs> oh, okay. I guess I gotta get out of this rock out of my leg. What's that movie where the guy has to cut his hand off? That's based on some thirty-six hours, yeah. seventy-two yeah, hours, something, some, something, something like that. that. Yeah. The oh, worst part is like he had like a very dull, crappy like <laughs> right. uh, yeah switchblade knife, right? Like right. A yeah. Swiss Army knife. <laughs> yeah. It's based on a true story. I mean, apparently it, this guy did it. I don't. I don't know. Yeah. I guess if you're desperate, like yeah. she is right now. Although she didn't have to cut her hand off, so she's right. better than. Game would be a lot more challenging than I think. So this is me now controlling it. It's kind of. Cool. Oh, you are cool. Yeah. This is definitely a huge improvement. I mean, not that the graphics on the reboot were bad at all, but this is definitely a huge improvement. Yeah. Well, I mean, that the reboot was like, what, 2013, maybe? Yeah. 2012? This is like just a few years old. Oh, maybe was it? Two okay. years old. It's funny now. Like, I'm getting to the age now where 2012 and 2013, I'm like, that was just a couple years ago. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, wait, that was seven years ago. I know. It's crazy. Okay, you got to get out of this cave. She's in a cave again. She always winds up in a cave. Starts off yeah. there anyway. Well, you know, the Amazon is underlain with a lot of karsts, so there should be caves. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, there's a there's a um, cave system in Ecuador that's very famous called Cueva de los Tallos. Um, and it's a I don't think it's being mapped completely because it's so huge, but there are artifacts in there, so people got in there and oh, did wow. things. Yeah. Hmm. yeah, I know, uh, I think in, in Central America, in Mexico, they've been doing some um, underwater archaeology and some of the cenotes. Oh, yeah. Just incredible, like, hu- human remains that are re- really well-preserved and very old. I think the last one was, like, 8,500 years old or something like that. I saw this on the other game last time when you guys were playing it. Who's arranging all the skulls? <laughs> like, seriously. It must yeah, be somebody yeah. here then. That's the implication, like, right? And, and why? I mean, that's like 20 people right there. Right. It's someone with obsessive compulsive disorder. They just like couldn't. Oh, look at those. I assume we're in a tomb, oh, yeah. right? Oh, they're like, is that jade? That's pretty cool. Look at that. It's like a jade knife. Wow. Very Maya. <laughs> just leaving jade lying around? Yeah. <laughs> Climbing right up that rock. No looks problem. Like there's been plenty of people before her. Yeah. Well, it looks like it. Yeah, it looks like there is, you know, marks there. So I guess people did the same could, thing. Could be a gameplay thing just to show you. Well, you can only go. climb on that porous rock. Yeah. Oh, uh, okay. Gotcha. Did you guys read what I'm supposed to do? I forgot. <laughs> no. Uh, no, I didn't. I missed it. Jump. Just I, jump. I'm supposed to jump. I know. Yeah. <laughs> If, if I know anything about Tomb Raider go. games, it's, move you're forward to... and press A to jump on the overhead. Oh, gotcha. Surface. I am. And you're supposed to get go. impaled. <laughs> you're going to get impaled by something next, that, is usually what happens. I don't think that would have worked. Wow, her core strength is amazing. Yeah, <laughs> and it's amazing how she can stick that into the rocks and then it doesn't just when pull off the rocks. When did she put that rock. crampons on? Did you see that? She's got crampons, but I don't oh, know. Oh, yeah. Where she put them on. Yeah. 
Oh, her She's leg was so broken fast. also. This is pretty incredible with a broken leg. <laughs> yeah. yeah, last time she was impaled by an arrow, and this time she's got a mashed leg. Wow, no look at that. And she's got a radio. That bothers me. Like, that's the first thing I would do is I would check the radio. I think she like, did. Hello? She's in a cave, and I think maybe reception's not good. No, okay. she's talking to somebody, isn't she? Wait, how is she talking in the radio? Of, well, she's yeah. got a radio and a phone? I'm very confused. Maybe she has one of those, like, Secret Service things in her ears. So the symbolism across, well, button. any of the symbolism, I guess. Ooh, any ideas on the culture? This looks very Maya or Mesoamerican. When you see skulls and snakes, that's always very Mesoamerican. Yeah. And it's, it's, I think they're making kind of like their own interpretation of the calendar. You see, you mm, see all the Maya mm, okay. glyphs around there. Yeah. And the light shining through, maybe? I don't know where that's oh, going yeah. yet. Yeah, it looks like it, it might be, huh? It's shining hitting that right thing. that crystal. It's we're like gonna, a tomb raid it. That we're yeah. going to leave because it's clearly <laughs> important and we should study it instead of just take it. Oh, uh, you know, the, the whole place is about to fall apart. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> well, she's in it. Of course, of course it is. Every good archaeologist knows if you remove the artifact, the whole temple will start falling apart. <laughs> <laughs> hey, is that the Big Dipper on the side I saw? Uh-oh. Oh, is that explosive? So. And it's charged. Yeah. Looks like there was She's a constellation on the sides. She's taking pictures. Yeah, oh, it is the Big Dipper. Well, I think. Or no, the dragon. What's the? Uh... Which I think incorporates the Big Dipper, maybe. Oh. At I least know a lot of times at least they she's use documenting. the same stars. Yeah, she's actually being okay right now. Yeah, she's at least documenting before she's going to destroy it. Hope she doesn't lose that camera. Yeah, <laughs> maybe that's yeah, going to be waterproof. maybe that's yeah. going to be her out. Is you know she's she's not going to take things, but she has to, or it'll be destroyed. Also, where did this guy come from? He didn't have to climb all those <laughs> yeah. crazy ledges. Where was he when she was trapped? He was like, oh, I just took the stairs. <laughs> 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 Did you not see the stairs over there? <laughs> They're made out of jade. <laughs> What's that thing on her, like, her shoulder? Is it a camera or something? Well, that's the equipment bag, right, where you can, find, you can fit 180 different items. <laughs> Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Wait. That looks modern. Also, what are the chances that that's the one thing you're gonna step on? And how did they rig that up to go off when the like the ancient trap was triggered? How did that cause an earthquake and not an explosion? Is my question. <laughs> that's another good question. She was right there. Oh, she didn't take the crystal. Oh, actually, kind of surprised and impressed. And it's she's okay. Always she documented it. Yeah, yeah she did. Yeah. She took a picture. For she's always almost getting crushed by boulders too. <laughs> yeah. Probably because she destroys the site. Well, that's archaeology, right? Yeah. <laughs> Our work <laughs> here is done. <laughs> I like how he looks kind of like the PI because he has like nothing on his fancy jacket while she looks like the field tech. That is yeah. all <laughs> that's true. Just... <laughs> the PI Very accurate. For anyone listening, he's a principal investigator and they're the ones in charge of the overall project and not doing the digging usually. So he's nice and clean. So that's this is the pretty. hidden city. Is that the hidden city that she's seeing for the first no, time? No, that's or like the else? colonial. Oh, no, actually, she's in Mexico, huh? Oh, cool. Mm. So she's not even oh, in I've... South America yet. I've been here. Cozumel. Oh, that's awesome. I've always wanted to go to Cozumel. Yeah. Huh. I went on a cruise. I don't recommend doing it on a cruise. Anything on a cruise, really? <laughs> oh yeah, no, especially not now. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Not now, but even even before, like, I had never gone on a cruise before, so I wanted to at least give it. This a is shot how I feel me. about cruises. Like, do I want to get stuck in a hotel that's floating around <laughs> with a bunch <laughs> of people? <laughs> that's pretty much all it is. I will say though, the food was pretty decent. But other than that, yeah, it's just like you're just in a big resort. Yeah. Around. Plus, they're terrible for the environment. They, there's that, too. Yeah, there's a lot of garbage. Yeah. But and yeah, also, I, like, visiting places like this, it's so crowded. It's hard to, like, enjoy anything when oh, everybody yeah. gets off. But yeah, Cozumel is an island of the coast of the Yucatan um, that has Maya sites on it, too, if people are wondering. Hmm. Off the yeah, coast? It's where it's, into yeah, the it's Gulf? Where all, or... Well, 
Maybe it's all under the gulf. Yes. Yes. I was just trying to think about the Peru. The, Why the isn't it Peru and not Ecuador, huh? <laughs> 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 oh, so this is my fun. Um, that's actually Maya. Uh, the numbers. Yeah, it's a Maya number. Okay, so she's, she's piecing it together that there's Maya stuff going on there. <laughs> I think we um, saw those numbers in Nancy Drew as well, actually. Maybe. Because that was Maya. Maybe, maybe she is Nancy Drew grown <laughs> up. Grown up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so this was my fun uh, Indiana Jones fact that I wanted to share with you guys. So, and the very, very famous scene where he picks up the idol, right? Before yes. the ball falls. This is in Raiders of the Lost Ark? That yes. One? Okay, yeah. So if you pause it and look at the room, you'll see these very large stone chairs in the shape of a U with like people under the U kind of holding it up. Okay. Right. It's crazy because I never noticed it until someone pointed it out. That is the most famous artifact of the Ecuadorian culture I, I study, the Manteño. Oh, they have really? These very large stone chairs um, that are called like seats of power. Um, uh -huh. So, yeah, you see them arranging the room uh, around the idol. It's really cool. It's like, what? Cool. <laughs> Do you think they did that on purpose? or? Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, oh, wow. I looked it up after seeing them. And I guess, you know, when they were doing research, they were just Googling, like, pre-Columbian stuff. And they, they saw that. And it was like, well, that's neat. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. So they're, I guess they were I'll have to rewatch it. Yeah, I was going to say. Yeah. In, yeah. <laughs> whatever, <laughs> you know, going to the library. Yeah, yeah. Whatever people yeah, did before the, the internet. Yeah, as, <laughs> go to the card catalog. Yeah. Hey, Sammy. Very nice. So you have hey, the, we have voices uh, again. You have voices? Yeah. I yeah, guess I hear it's it. just okay. the main dialogue, the dialogue you guys can't hear. It's really strange, yeah. yeah. Well, oh, when I was in Cozumel, I did not find this place, but I wish I had. Fireworks? Yeah. Well, that's depressing. You'd rather storm guards. <laughs> that's really pretty, though. They did such a good job. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, she's wearing a mask. Hmm. All right, looks like we're going to get some action soon, <laughs> maybe. I wonder for the developers if they if they tried to replicate the Cozumel as well. Like if, did they did they find a place like this and then just take a bunch of pictures and try to recreate it? Cuz I know like the Assassin's Creed's game Creed game, they they apparently do that. They'll go to these old cities and use mm -hmm. LiDAR to scan buildings and then use that in the actual gameplay. Yeah, I don't know about this game, but yeah, that's that's definitely the future. I mean, now you can just, you know, laser scan anything and make it into a digital model. Mm -hmm. So That's kind of how they're getting all these, like, incredibly realistic textures and stuff in, like, next-gen games now. It's, it's all the actual scanned, mm -hmm. real imagery. Putting a lot of artists out of work, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I guess they still they they're still needed though to some extent. For sure. I think definitely, yeah. yeah. Well, it's a rough industry though. Um, you know, you get all these people that are just like workhorses that code and do this stuff for you know sixty hours a week before crunch time, before a release date, and then you have massive layoffs after it's all done. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah right. It's pretty yeah. rough. Hey, but the product is beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, I'm I'm totally okay with it, for right, you know, for this. But I'm glad, you know, I feel bad for them for sure. Yes, sir. Oh, I mean, that's why they're unionizing and it's trying getting to like a little better. Uh, yeah. And I think the public is reacting too, you know, against uh, big studios and some other practices. So hopefully, it'll get better. They make, I mean, the video game industry is, you know, billions and billions of dollars. It's the highest grossing entertainment yeah. industry in the world now. It's, yeah. it's unbelievable. <laughs> it's like, man, I need to, I need to get in on this somehow. Right? Maybe, maybe this is the way. This, <laughs> she have gotten into a 
coding consultant. Early on. Yeah, coding. <laughs> yeah, be, or just be a consultant. Although I, oh, how I would much love to. Yeah. Well, well we, if Square right. Enix hears this, maybe. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you guys did such wonderful work. You know. We'll send the video. Well, there, I right. said how much I love Final so Fantasy, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, your pots and your lemons are a little bit off. So yeah, you put that time. pot in the rock, that's not okay. Yeah, you can talk to one of us. I'll mainly I'll talk to Andreas, sure and uh, <laughs> he'll let you know. Well, oh, guys, we're at, we're, at, um, we're at 1 o'clock now, so that is that is our hour for uh, Archaeology Arcade. Well, sorry uh, this was a lot of talk and not a whole lot of no, action. No, 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 this is awesome. This is perfect. I, I, think, um, <laughs> um, I mean, I think just walking around the town, this is stuff people aren't going to get unless they're talking to you. So that was, I think that was wonderful. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> thanks. And so can never be hopefully same. maybe you'll Your come back relations. and we can kind of pick up where we left off and, and do this again. And Oh, yeah, anytime. Yeah, Definitely. Awesome. Yeah, can well, you save uh, it anywhere? Or do you have to do a checkpoint? Oh, yeah, no, it's all good. Good. Okay. Yeah, All right, well, for beautiful. everybody that joined us on Twitch today, I want to thank everyone for uh, watching this. And uh, I will put this up on our YouTube channel probably tomorrow or maybe the next day. So if you missed part of it there, you can, you can see the full thing uh, on our YouTube channel, just uh, youtube.com backslash uh, Florida Public Archaeology Network. Uh, I want to thank uh, Andreas for being our featured archaeologist for this, I, I learned so much and I can't wait to uh, maybe come back for another episode in the future and just pick up right where we left off to see what other cool things uh, you can point out. Maybe, uh, who knows, maybe this will result in a consultant job in the future for <laughs> the, next, the next version of this game. I really appreciate the invitation. It's been a blast. And yeah, anytime, let me know. We'll, we'll hopefully get to some uh, more action-driven uh, uh, video game playing. <laughs> I mean, oh, we almost, fun. she almost cut her leg off. Like, come on, people. Yeah, that, was, that is that was true. Good that is pretty dramatic. <laughs> <laughs> there is an earthquake or whatever. And There's so always, always, always an earthquake. <laughs> always going to be. <laughs> All right. Thanks, everybody. And thanks, Andres, for coming. We'll see you next time.